Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today we are going to continue uh, the lecture on the governance models in a globally dispersed uh, uh, supply chain and uh, uh, we will specially concentrate in this and next lecture on the orchestration model. First uh, what we would do is to do a recap of uh, what uh, uh, we have kind of done in the last two classes on the governance of global supply chain networks. Then I will introduce the, the orchestration model and some examples in the real world like airlines, uh, like print supply chains, uh, uh, like logistics and all that where there are lots of orchestrators in principle although they are not theoretically well studied. Then we talk about uh, an example of orchestration in supply chains and orchestration of small and medium enterprises which is a very important topic particularly in emerging markets like India and orchestration and logistics. And one important thing in the, in the agriculture markets in India is the mandi. The mandi is, is basically is a place where it is a, it's a, a government controlled or government owned uh, place where all the farmers come and also all the retailers and others who want the, the fresh uh, vegetables like onions, uh, you know, potatoes and other things, they come there and there is a trading that happens in the Mandi. So currently Mandi is like, like a place where people come, uh, it is like a marketplace. But if we can convert that into an orchestrator, it is going to be beneficial for in several ways in India. And then we will talk about orchestration in print supply chain and uh, that is particularly for a bank uh, we worked for, it is a very interesting example. <coughs> then finally if you are following this kind of governance model where orchestration means you own nothing, you basically outsource everything but you manage everything. So in the risks of orchestration and mitigation both for the people who are uh, with this one as well as for the orchestrators and we will conclude this lecture. So let us uh, uh, do uh, a recap of uh, what we did in the last two classes. So we said uh, you know an organization structure is something which basically governs the delivery process for in other words after all any network has to deliver products to the customers and somebody has to specify what is the product and how it is to be delivered and so on. So all that is done by the uh, uh, by the governance structure. So identifies managers relations with the government, trade, social groups, labor, resources, B2B, B2C delivery mechanisms. In other words all the players they have to be contacted and known. Then builds business models and relationship with growth enhancement. In other words, what are you going, what is the kind of business model? Is it outsourcing? Is it doing it yourself or is it joint venture? What is the kind of business model that you want to follow? And then build systems for effective communication, collaboration and coordination among the net network partners. It is very important that people should be on the same page for uh, the kind of when they want to work together and so on and identifies and categorizes the risk from various ecosystem sources and puts in place risk, risk mitigation strategies in operation readiness. So there are several risks as we have seen in the previous lectures in the global supply chain that can happen. It can come from resources like oil price increases, it can come from uh, uh, the government or it can come from various other sources. So in this kind of thing is it possible to identify all the risks and then mitigate them. And for every customer order, select partners, allocate the task responsibilities and form the network. So the network formation becomes uh, uh, 
becomes a very uh, uh, important thing particularly once there is a um, there is a customer order you have to select the partners tell them what to do and so on and ensures labor laws and environmental standards are followed because they are in a global supply chain they are basically their latter this one uh, need to be followed yeah. manages the control room for monitoring the execution after all you may have the planning but the planning need to be uh, executed properly so the governance partner selection and coordination and control are the uh, three things the governance means the partner selection coordination and control the supply chain is an internal organizational network a separate chain is formed for each order partner selection is based on structural features relational ties and coordination is determining who does what when and communicating to everyone and execution is monitor order status so that the process is work as per plan so we have seen the definitions of this in the in the coordination and we have seen this diagram where we have we select all the partners based on the requirements that we have particularly the suppliers logistics providers manufacturers and so on once there is an order then you coordinate to find out who are the people for best for that order if the order is from the united states you select those people so so that the costs are minimum and then finally execute the order <coughs> So there, we said there are three types of um, governance models that can be followed. One is highly centralized external broker that is called also called an orchestrator which we are going to talk about in this lecture. Second one is participant shared uh, governance by elected board. This is very popular in diaries, cooperatives and healthcare. And third one is participant shared by lead player like uh, producer driven like Cisco, Nike and so on are buyer driven. So we said all the three governance forms are in practice and are not proved to be superior. So let us look at the orchestrator model in this detail. So what is an orchestration? If you look at the traditional business, it is an organic expansion and acquisition. In other words, you basically either have you know, all the assets, you want to build new assets and to grow through acquisition you buy them. So you own all the assets that you need, but what is that is the traditional business. But the need to own assets when the physical ones are intangible ones is what makes the traditional growth model risky. In other words, you have to invest a lot of money into the assets, building up other, let it be human resources, let it be uh, 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 let it be buildings uh, or machinery, whatever. When you have the assets, you want to invest on fr front and payoff comes later. So the leverage growth or the orchestrated model mobilizes the needed assets existing within other companies. It is important to you need not have to own all the assets. You need don't own all the assets, but you orchestrate their growth. So. All the needers as with other companies to support your own growth initiative. Developers using contractors on marketing. So for example, these are the examples. Traders use contract manufacturers. Control room in another country orchestrating terror attack in another country. So basically, you know, whenever there is something good, something bad also can be done. There are a lot of orchestration that goes on in terrorist attacks. So what is orchestration? Architects are lending algorithm, lending organizations with privileged relationships. So their employees may never touch a product. Such organizations mobilize other companies' assets and capabilities to deliver value to the customers. Leverage growth captures economic benefits while avoiding the economic burden of asset ownership. Architects must be competent at recruiting the right providers, capturing right modules and overseeing the performance of the network. So basically orchestration is you own nothing but you manage uh, the, the product delivery through this, uh, through your relationships and so on. So, so that is where you should have enough competent uh, uh, people to, uh, to recruit right providers and do the right kind of things and overseeing the performance. After all, you know, uh, the reputation, if something goes bad, the reputation of orchestrator also goes bad. 
So, roles of the network orchestrator, there is a mm, this one is a network architect selects number of companies that make up the business network and network judge orchestrator is the key interface for the end consumer. So, to make sure that the network output is promised one, the orchestrator sets, monitors and adopts the performance standards. So, in other words, once the performance standards for each one of these partners has to be set by the orchestrator and network develop or develop the network's physical and non-material assets including knowledge acquisition, uh, knowledge transfer across member firms and creation of strong brand image and he is also a charismatic leader. It creates and manages rich texture of interactions in the network taking a long term view of the relationship and expect partner companies to do likewise. So, basically you are managing, but in the managing you should have some capabilities. What are those capabilities? Architecture, you have to be a judge, you should know what is the performance of the total system and what should be the performance of the individual system so that the total performance is reached and you should also develop the physical and non-physical assets for knowledge acquisition and all that and you should be a charismatic leader. So, because you know the interactions people should listen to you, why should anyone listen to you unless uh, so you should provide enough incentives and you should be you should have enough market power so that people listen to you. So, basically what we are looking at is an orchestrator who owns nothing but manages and tries to build up a business. So, for such a kind of uh, people then these, these four are the, uh, uh, the qualities that are needed, but orchestrators and partners succeed or fail together. So, it is important for people to realize although you do not own anything and there is no risk of assets, but there is always a risk of uh, your reputation and also a risk of your business failing. So, what is the value of orchestration and global supply chain? Value in traditional forms comes from owning assets, specialization, owning skills in specific areas, protecting trade secrets and keeping out rivals and even partners. So, it is about so called competitive advantage, you know either your assets or your soft skills whatever, but what about in orchestration? The value of orchestration in manufacturing a service comes from leadership, integration, targeted performance, bridging borders and leveraging companies connections and knowledge across the network. So, what is your competency is your competency is connecting to others competencies. In other words, if you have to make a product, you find out what are all the competencies needed for the design, for the manufacturer, for the distribution, for retail and for selling it in the market and so on and then you connect to the appropriate people, that is your competency. So, let us look at uh, some of these uh, examples of uh, orchestrators uh, in this and the orchestrators are uh, uh, for example, in the real world uh, a contractor of a large commercial building, supposing there is an airport or a, or a seaport that is built, uh, the construction project orchestrates, orchestrates a broad array of highly specialized service providers for construction, electrical wiring fitting, plumbing, interior decoration, furniture design, security systems and all that. He may not have the all the capabilities that, but he can orchestrate, he, he subcontracts and orchestrates this. So, basically a contractor may not may not have any any of these uh, capabilities, but he has the connections. And a cement producer orchestrates complex process required to make a movie, cinema producer orchestrates the complex process required to make a movie. So, in the movie producers or the directors, they only know the this one, they do not have the script, uh, they get the actors and everybody and uh, the, uh, they may not own the studios, they rent the studios, 
and they rent the cameraman and finally make the movie. In an apparel business, the Lee and Fang provides a powerful example of a new kind of sophisticated orchestrator coordinating a very broad process network. You know, Lee and Fang basically take six weeks what others take for more than six months. In times of orchestrating and supplying a design from design to uh, to delivery, it, it takes only six weeks uh, in apparel. This one, and finally in fashion business. So there are several examples even in our daily world that uh, uh, you know contractors, cinema producers, apparel manufacturers who are basically orchestrators. And one of the uh, very uh, uh, important examples in the agri-food network is Wallam International. Uh, Wallam International evolved as a global leader in agriculture communications. It is based out of Singapore uh, from uh, a, large, a small Nigerian company. So basically what the Wallam International does is it collects, it does not, it collects all the uh, the, the material from the farmers and it applies to the big stores. So in other words if they have cashew they, they collect it to farmers, clean it and package it and then finally supply it to the people in various uh, in various forms. And this is true for it does it for all the fruits, uh, dry fruits to uh, other things. So it does not own any farms but orchestrates a network of small producers. And Olam is Olam International Limited supplies raw and processed agri uh, agriculture communities grown mainly by small and medium sized producers in developing and emerging countries to regional and international countries. So it takes from Africa, India and other places from small farmers and uh, basically takes these things, packages them, sometimes processes them like drying and uh, so that uh, they last long uh, and puts them uh, in a temperature sensitive environment and supplies it to uh, international customers or retailers. All I'm directly engages in sourcing, in other words it sources the whatever uh, the vegetables and processing, transport, warehousing and distribution of broad range of commodities including cocoa, rice, timber, cashew nuts, cotton, coffee, sugar, sesame, she nuts and spices. So these are these are items what it does is it collects from the farmers and basically processes them so that they are all cleaned and uh, hygiene and transports them, warehouses them and distributes them uh, to various kinds of retailers. And one of the supplier to many of the world's most popular prominent brands offering reliability, consistency, trust, traceability and other value added services. Now in food products one of the very important things is adulteration or some kind of contamination. So adulteration is done by with the knowledge of the people who are doing it whereas contamination is, is may, not, may happen without the knowledge of the suppliers. So traceability is very important. If you have an item, a package which is of, of cashew nuts or whatever or, or some spices and uh, if, if some food poisoning happens, it should be possible to trace up to the form where it came from. And this is also uh, true with other kinds of uh, items but uh, Olam basically uh, supplies only agriculture commodities. So there is another uh, very popular uh, this one which is in the airlines. Now many of us think the airlines won the aircrafts, uh, they, they won uh, the staff, they won the, this one and all that but it is not true. Major airlines were asset in Sinsu and own aircrafts, reservation systems, maintenance teams, baggage crews and catering services and all that. 
but this is one way you know of owning everything. But there are several other examples of recent times. For example, Southwest, JetBlue and Ryanair retain only the core of branding. In other words, they use their only the reservation systems on the internet and they basically have some staff to uh, to run the aircraft and help the passengers. But together options, they lease the engines, the aircraft and the contractor over the baggage handling, maintenance, etc. So, they own, they own nothing else other than the passenger reservation system and also the staff like the pilot and, and the people uh, in the in the aircraft to help the passengers. So, the passengers you may go there, there is no seat allotment, you go, whoever goes first gets the seat. So, these are the kinds of uh, things, but what I mean is, what I mean is they are just like a, they take as I told yesterday, but they, they basically took the this one out of the bus, city bus transport, intercity bus transport. They took a, a, a leaf out of that and tried to arrange this. So, here they are just basically orchestrating the entire thing, but they are not they are not owning any of these any one of these things. So, but then Southwest people like Southwest have a lot of our jet blue has a lot of reputation. How did they get that reputation? Because they were able to orchestrate very well. They have the connections with others and their aircraft maintenance everything is done properly and passengers are taken care although they are not supplied food on the aircraft and all that, but the aircrafts are clean and there is there is there on time and and so on. So, basically there are other things what the passengers look for, they they have those things. And to ensure that planes fly on time and maintain their safety records required orchestration skills, particularly when the business processes were not fully worn by the carrier. So, when you do not own the uh, this one for example, the repair and maintenance of the aircraft, you do not own the aircraft. So, the maintenance teams may say oh the aircraft is owned by somebody else. So, uh, like Boeing and so Boeing has to tell us. So, there could be lot of administrative and other kinds of problems. And so, the connections of the people and others is it becomes very important. While the success of these carriers rightfully attributed to their distinctive strategic positioning, this positioning depended on the skills in network orchestration. So, basically trying to find out like the network judge, the performance uh, this one I mean now if we look at all the four qualities applied to the airlines. So, what is that the passengers expect? and what is that that should happen at various places. So, all your partners from the passengers uh, expect safety. So, for the safety the passenger should the, that safety comes here from the aircraft and the airline carriers, uh, the, the airport uh, people and they also expect uh, good behavior from the staff and all that. So, they get all that. So, in the network orchestration. Basically, your strategic advantage comes in connecting right people and make them behave well, so that you are successful and they are successful. So, what are the talents needed uh, for this? One is deep domain knowledge, whether it is airline business or construction business or logistics business, detailed understanding of the practices, processes followed being coordinated including the IP issues and building capabilities for management, you know for procurement, for acquisition, for partner selection, monitoring, supervision and visibility across the entire value chain. So, whatever whatever business you are in, you I mean one thing is you may not own the assets, but you have to manage uh, the manage the delivery of or the uh, uh, delivery process of your products through the uh, through the value chain to somebody assets, somebody else's assets. That is where the problem is. You do not want the asset, somebody else wants it, but your product 
goes through them. So, you should have the right kind of connection so that you get a priority, you are not treated badly and you 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 get the right kind of service that uh, that you require. And relationship management, developing and maintaining trusted relationship with customers, suppliers, service providers, governments and employees. So, take the ecosystem that we have learned and find out who are all the people for your vertical and have a relationship with them. This could be the government, state governments, uh, the uh, city, city, uh, municipality or it could be uh, the doctors in a hospital or it could be uh, 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 the oil suppliers, it could be the uh, educational institutions, whoever it is, you should have a good relationship management. And capabilities to identify, continuously redesign and manage processes to the change market needs. So, it is important that you realize that the market changes. So, when the market changes, you should basically redesign and manage your processes. So, recruiting the right talent, training, mentoring them with appropriate performance evaluation tools. So, since you cannot do it alone, whoever is the orchestrator, orchestrator is a company, company means employees. So, it has to recruit the right kind of talent and the talent here is much different from the talent in an ordinary vertically integrated company. Here the orchestration skills are different, there are basically a lot of soft skills that are need, required. It is not as though you are, you are measuring a particular uh, uh, particular uh, product on a, on a NC machine, but here you are dealing with people and you are trying to make things happen and you are trying to deal with with uh, with organizations which are basically you deal with them, but you do not own them. Now, one of the examples is you know when there is a, a saying that whenever when you when the uh, uh, when there is this Sagar uh, Mathana happened, there is the Amrita that came as well as the Hala Hala. So, whenever there is a good thing either technology or a practice that comes, there is both good and bad that happen. So, one of the uh, things is, uh, that happened and which has shook India was there were 10 men attacked the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel in Mumbai, November 2008 and they executed one of the best orchestrated most technologically advanced terrorist strikes in history. So, there were 10 people outside, the whole of India I said, I mean Taj Mahal palace inside, they entered that and before the assault, they had used Google Earth to explore 3D models of the target and determine optimal entry and exit routes, defensive positions and security posts. See how they have used the technology. During the melee, they used Blackberry satellite phones, GSM handsets to coordinate their command center. So, there is a command center which monitored broadcast news and internet to provide real time information and tactical direction. So, when these people were there through the satellites, they were there is an orchestrator somewhere else. It could be in Mumbai, it could be in somewhere else in other country and so on. God knows where the other orchestrator is, but the orchestrator has access to information which these people do not have. What is that information they have? You know, they see, they watch the TV news and also other real time information. So, when a bystander tweeted a photo of a commander's rappelling from the helicopter onto the roof, one of the buildings, the center alerted the attacks and which set up a trap in the stairwell. In other words, there was a helicopter which was dropping soldiers onto the hotel top. And this basically is visible uh, to somebody outside. So, he took a photograph and tweeted it and that got, they got access to the, that and they basically they know somebody is dropping down and they foot a trap. So, it took 3 days for authorities to kill 9 of the terrorists and arrest the 10th which has resulted in 163 deaths and 100 injuries. There were resources which could have addressed this problem. 
you know we are talking of two orchestrators here one is the the terrorists who are inside they were very well orchestrated but we are talking the people the safety from outside the indian army police and other and the people so there were resources that could have addressed this problem naturally but they were not in the right place not under the right authority governance is missing in the indian side so the the, the point is how do you how do you go and handle this kind of organized crimes so the people uh, is controlled who orchestrating the mumbai attacks stalked with computers televisions voice over internet phones from a foreign company and satellite phones top commanders of the terrorist organization have set up a control room from where they controlled and directed the mumbai carnage the terrorist organization may have set up a remote command post in a safe house or a hotel in india or make believe it is some other country so baby we don't know where it was the phone handlers made the attack interactive relaying reports about television cover coverage to the gunmen so it's so you can see that uh, you know this is a short two day fire but this has happened happened uh happened in india and the the control room so called uh this one uh, was basically highly interactive it was trying to get information from the tv and other news sources maybe there are other terrorists who are outside taking photographs and tweeting to the control room so that the control room can direct uh, the terrorists inside so if we can see when we were talking about cyber security of somebody uh, trying to this one uh, attack your computers put virus and so on the nature of war is also changing is becoming not only technology intensive it is also becoming the governance of this this nature of war is also changing from the uh, you know command centers like the army to orchestration of various kinds of groups who are placed in different places and so on so let us look at orchestration in in the supply chain uh, this one uh, what happens now what is supply chain supply chain you have suppliers a group of them at this one and they could be co-located or they could be in different places in a country they could be in china india hong kong and so on and there are of course manufacturers and between the suppliers and manufacturers you can see the supplier is connected to all the manufacturers and so on so this is arbitrary connections but there there were connections between them but what happens is if the manufacturer say is in singapore and if the suppliers are in are in china bangladesh or india and so on it may not some of them are connected some of them are not connected and the third party logistics providers who transfer the goods from manufacturers suppliers to the manufacturers and so on they are also there and some of the manufacturers are connected to them and of course there are distribution centers and consumers there are various of consumers these consumers are all in uh, in different countries and there are distribution centers now the point here is you have somebody here who this fellow has strong connections with all of them now whereas you can see that this is a sequential connection in other words some of the manufacturers may know the suppliers but the distributors may not know who the suppliers are or the rate consumers may not know who supplied what are the components and so on right but on the other hand if the supply chain delivery process everybody somebody has to know everyone so that the entire process is very well orchestrated so here orchestrator is highly embedded in the supply chain almost all actors interact with it so this fellow who is the orchestrator here and he is highly embedded and he knows everybody this is like li and fang in the apparel supply chain the relationship between the focal firm and wo represents a strong tie these are all strong ties yeah 
in the sense providing access to valuable resources that in this case are the benefits arising from woe, know-how and relationships. So, each of them they benefit from the relationship of, of these people. So, if they, this manufacturer wants some supplier then this fellow knows this group of people here. So, he can he can help selecting or if this fellow wants if somebody comes uh, some consumers or the, uh, this one want uh, uh, the orchestrator to design a product or a shoe or a, or a shirt or a pant or several of them then since he knows all these uses connections he can maintain the supply chain. So, here if you look at uh, the orchestration you should what is that orchestrator does you know planning coordination and overall responsibility all our responsibility means execution. So, that is what the orchestrator does. Now, what are the kinds of capabilities that you have apart from we are always talking about talent and so on, but there should be other capabilities for planning and, and coordination and all that it has to have all the information from all the sources. It should have the computing capability it should have a communication network, it should be able to receive information as well as, as well as communicate to others other this one. So, this is a control room which basically has information about this and here what do you have? You have suppliers, third party logistics, contract manufacturers and so on. We are talking of the supply chain model. Now, what the orchestrator does is the end customer sends an order once the end customer sends an order then the orchestrator will contact all of them and find out what is the operational status. In other words, if the end consumer wants a particular product in so many numbers what is the capacity that is available from these people. So, if the capacity that is available is less than what the orders require then they may have to have two suppliers or two contract manufacturers and also 3PL may have to make two visits and so on. So, the operational status is an important thing from this. And the second one is depending on the operational status, they, he makes plans and then he sends this is the coordination step and sends it to the each of these people the order. and then it goes into the, the material flow and, and the payment. So, the payment the pay, payment happens I mean once the materials flow the payment happens and the payment is done to all the people. So, suffice it to say here this uh, the orchestrator has the planning coordination and, and execution responsibilities here and he has this control tower or, uh, or a boardroom or whatever where he sits and manages the product delivery through all this. So, the end customer he has to pay after receiving the materials and so on. So, that is the that is the kind of thing that uh, the orchestrator business model does. So, let us look at the orchestration of the SMEs. What are SMEs? SMEs are small and medium enterprises. They do not have much financial capabilities, they may not have much connections. So, they develop, maintain, continuously upgrade the SME network in response to the market requirements. Now, so if we are an either an apple business or apparel business or uh, agriculture business or you are in uh, 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 you are in toy business, these small players you have to develop, maintain and continuously upgrade the these people. So, depending on the market. So, if you are in the global, if you want to integrate them into the global uh, value chain, 
you have to say what are the requirements of the global value chain in terms of the apparels, in terms of the toys and so on. It would be Barbie doll, it could be some other doll. What about the doll, what are the requirements and what are the machinery that is required and what are the skills that are needed for all this. Recruit and develop service providers into the SME network. You have to basically get this and identify players in the ecosystem, customers, government and develop strategic relationships. Cultivate a deep understanding of the underlying business processes and practices in the vertical. If it is a Barbie doll manufacture, toys manufacturer, one has to understand what is the important processes that are involved in terms of the procurement and how many countries it is going through and what are the regulations that countries face and how do you transport them by ship, by truck, whatever and so on. So basically you have to understand the procurement, manufacturing and the distribution business processes and what are the practices. Define standards with SMEs for communication, coordination and execution. So you have to connect with them. The structure tangible and intangible incentives for SME participants. So when they participate, you should give them incentives. So what are the kinds of incentives? So I mean the point is these are small players here and for the small players, they do not have a global this one. You are getting them, giving them a global order and you should, you should mentor them and so that uh, they, they work well and communicate, coordinate uh, with them and so that your order is, is delivered well. And for people who are doing well, you should provide them incentives. So develop and manage performance feedback loop to facilitate learning about individual SME performance and risk profile. So basically, in other words, from as an orchestrator, when you are dealing with SMEs who are skilled and semi-skilled, then one has to be careful in terms of mentoring them and making them understand all the processes and the importance of being this one. What are the operational roles here? For a customer demand, unbundle the service and dynamically compose a service chain involving multiple service providers. In other words, you have Basically, every service, every service, let it be a Barbie doll or let it be providing uh, some kind of a service in a hospital. You can basically uh, dissect the entire thing into a, a set of tasks. So, for each task, you unbundle the, the into tasks and compose a service chain. In other words, where is it done what? Like a Barbie doll, you do it uh, a portion here somewhere, the uh, the uh, the structure somewhere, and uh, the clothes somewhere else, and so on. All this you have to basically write even for a service chain. In the logistics, for example, you have to you have to collect it and put it put it in a warehouse, so load it, unload it, and and put it on a truck, and transport it, and finally deliver it. So every every chain service uh, or service chain can be decomposed into various tasks and identify the quality suppliers help them design and manufacture products meeting stringent delivery requirements despite poor quality infrastructure. You should understand most of these countries are in are in emerging markets like India, China and so on. Whereas although the companies may be good that the surrounding infrastructure like logistics and information technology and other things could be poor. So you should work instead of complaining about the quali poor quality infrastructure, you should work with the poor quality structures to do it. Identify checkpoints, targets, deadlines and interfaces for each of the activities in the service chain and monitor at the higher level whether these are met. So and monitor and handle exceptions so that the final service delivery is not affected. Supposing you are making uh, a doll, something, something happens and there is more lead on the this one in the paint. So you have to abandon that and then do it, uh, do do a fresh one so that all the uh, conditions uh, safety uh, is is ensured. So these are the operational roles of orchestration. 
So, if you look at uh, the orchestrator, this one, uh, you have an orchestrator here. This is for the supply chain. You have the client, and you sit with the clients, and then you try to try to get what is the kind of uh, the product you want, and you get the design first. So, once you have the design. Uh, this one. Then the orchestrator you communicate with the designer and you will find out what are the kinds of materials that are needed for this. So, once you have the materials then you have to source the materials. So, the sourcing of the materials is the is an important task that is basically uh, done. So, with the suppliers that is where for example, if you are talking of an apparel, then you have to source the dyes, you have to source the cotton, you have to source the chippers, you have to source the, source the buttons, uh, various other kinds of the hood for if you are talking of a jacket and and so on, the cloth and others and sewing and so on. So, you have to basically get the materials and the services people in this. And then you choose the factories where these are being made. And you have to basically ensure quality control. What is the quality control requirement that how is, how is the quality control uh, being ensured in recent times? The quality control is in earlier days, the people used to visit the factory and be in the factory and check the quality online as the process as the product comes out. But nowadays people are using the video conferencing uh, things and also whatever data that is come down, whatever measurements, quality measurements that are taken, all the quality measurements are emailed or they are, they are put on, a, on, a, on, the, on the web and people can read, analyze and find out the quality instead of the visit to the factory on site visits have reduced in recent times and people use either video conferencing or, or uh, 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 remote uh, machine, uh, machine uh, data mining. Uh, to do uh, to assess the qualities here and this of course there is logistics there is logistics in terms of procurement when you are sourcing the material there is logistics when across when you are transferring the material uh, to the distributors and also to the uh, uh, to the consumers and so on so when when you are talking of uh, this kind of orchestration whether it is dolls, whether it is food or this one, it is sometimes very important to look at all the other aspects of here in this. One is the logistics, you have inbound logistics that is the material sourcing to the factories and from the factories to the, this one is outbound logistics, but there is what is called reverse logistics or when they are called product recalls. In other words, if you want to have uh, green uh, technologies in this. So, if you want to be green, what you usually do is uh, you have what is called the reverse logistics. The product is collected from the customer. The product is collected from the customer and it is sent back to the factories. So, this is called the reverse logistics and this also happens in case of product recalls. Supposing that if the, there is a problem with a particular product, let it be an automobile or a doll or whatever and or, in, or a pet food. There is whenever it is detected that there is something wrong with it, these products are recalled. Now, recall means from the customers, it has to go back to the factory or to the site where it is and there will be all, side, all sites of government regulations and inquiries and other kinds of things that happen. So, people have to be careful uh, uh, in also getting the reverse logistics in place because something can, can go wrong in here. And this happened in metal which is uh, a Barbie doll company because there were child deaths due to when they lick the, uh, the paint and the, in the, on the doll then some people developed uh, some kind of problems and this was compliant and uh, there were a lot of product recalls and metal the company got a very bad name. So, 
the issue here is that when you are doing everything, you are in control of all the things. But when you are outsourcing and when you are just managing, you have to be extremely careful about the safety and also whether people are following the product specifications, the right kind of products and so on. So, if they, you do not do it, then you will get into problems because uh, if your partners uh, by mistake uh, put a lead paint, then if the child gets sick, then you will get hit. So, as we said, the orchestrator takes responsibility for all the products that are delivered and to that extent he should be being the managed. So, although they do not want any of these assets, but the responsibility increases because to make people work for you when you do not want them is more difficult and that requires soft skills.